Okay, Maseches Bov Metzia. Maseches Baba Mezia. Bov Metzia, Daf Nun Zaino with Bays in the very bottom of the page. In the bottom of the page, Nun Zaino with Bays. Shermachinam Einonish Ba. Shermachinam does not swear. Yeah, what did we say? No, I don't mean swear words. Nobody should say those. What happens if a Shomer Hinam looks after something of Hekdesh? Yeah. Something that belongs to Hekdesh and a Shomer, somebody guards the item for free. Yeah. He's volunteering to look after the gold and silver of the Holy Temple. And then something gets lost and we don't know how. And he says this and we say the other. He says it was not Pasha. I say you were Pasha, Mr. Shomer Hinam. And then what do we say? He does not have to take a Shvua. Does he have to pay if it was really Pshia? If it was caught by him, but we're not talking about it now. We're talking about Shavua. Before we continue, let's not waste our time and look at the Gemara right now. This is one of those things that needs long and nice introduction. <laughs> even before the chart, even before the, the diagram. We are now going to learn a quick shear about Shkolim. Not the Shkolim that we have in our pockets. But the mitzvah of Machtis Shekel coming up soon in the yeah, next few parshas. The Aloha says like this <clears throat> every person in Cloud Israel has to be included in the Korbonos of Beis Amikdash. When in Beis Amikdash to bring communal Korbonos, they have to be financially, generally speaking, financially belonging to everybody. Yeah, everybody has a part yeah, in those Korbonos and the activity of Beis Amikdash. How do you do that? People donate their Shkolim, they donate once a year, and really some people would postpone it, but ideally, when would they donate the Shkolim? In other, before the new year, which starts in Nisan, okay? Then the many, 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 many half Shkolim would be, what, accumulated in Beth Mikdash in a room, yeah? And now they would be accumulated into three big boxes, and now boxes are more like horns, three pushkas that were very big. Yes, there were three, and then there were another nine. And there were some left over in the room. There's a big room just for the, all the money. And then, now comes what we are going to focus on today. Three times a year, there was a, shall we call it, ceremony called Tumas Halishka. In other words, why it was done three times a year, we're going to see later. Three times a year, before Pesach, before Shavuos, and before Sukkot, three times a year, the Gizborim would come to the room. They would make sure that they're dressed in a way that, with no creases, People don't uh, don't suspect them that they can steal anything. You don't let a poor person doing it or a greedy person doing it. So there should be no suspicions. Also, there are aiding things. The kids are three times a year. They would do a truma. What do you mean a truma? They would take they would take from the three big kupos or three big pushkas. They would take um, money. There would be the supply for the next few month korbanas. And that would be give, put in three small coupons. Yeah. In other words, out of the three big ones, it would take only three small ones. Why it was divided to three? Because different regions in Eretz Israel, for people in Chutzarts, the Maisa, there was a moment in which they said, now the money that was generally given to Beis Amikdash is dedicated to the Korbanos of the next few months. Okay. Now, what happens if I'm a latecomer and I did not yet send my shekel? It's very important. Every word I'm saying now is important because. That's the basis for the entire studio. So if you want to get it right, yeah, you listen now, and it's all going to be good. If the person is late, I did not send my shkolim in order. I didn't have shkolim. I couldn't, uh, whatever. The chule, <coughs> it doesn't matter. I'm still included in the korbanos. Yeah, I'm still included in the korbanos. And when, in the morning after, when they bring a korban with the money that they used, yeah, I'll, I'll give you, even before those people are lost, yeah, let's say in, in the room they have Million shkolim, right? And only, I don't know, 200,000 were taken. What about all the shkolim that were given by people whose coins are still in the room? Of course, they're included in the korbonos. Everyone should be included. The koyanim have in mind that although only part of the money was set aside, I would say it in English, to Uma for the korbonos, and korbonos are bought with it, it still includes everybody. What about the latecomers? Even if my money is not at all in Beis Amikdash yet, it's on its way. It's on its way. Oh, here we can start. I gave on Monday. I live far away. I live in uh, I live in uh, Metula. That's very far. 
on Monday, I gave my money to, not to Shlomo, but to the messenger with an E. I gave it to the messenger, and he didn't lose anything. It's on its way, on its way. So nice. He's now in the train on his way to Yerushalayim. And we know that on Wednesday, he was still on his way to Yerushalayim. Yeah. So that very interest, important moment, if at the moment of Truma Salishka, the money of Mr. Monday, the money of the owner was on its way to Yerushalayim, on its way to Yerushalayim, when they did Truma Salishka, I just chose Wednesday, not Bedavka, just, what? No, 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 no. They did it three times in, not on the Shodesh Shodor, no. They did it 15 days before Pesach, 15 days before Shavuos, and 15 days before Sukkot. That's Truma Salishka, not the big Truma. No. So let's say that was one of the three times a year when they did Truma Salishka. <laughs> as long as its money is on its way here, <clears throat> yeah, while we are doing the Truma Salishka, no problem. Even if the money arrives on Thursday, no problem. You're included and you pay later. Get your korban now and pay later. Now, I'll add now, I'll add now. A bigger Chiddush is, bigger Chiddush, oh, now we're coming to the hot water. What happened if it got lost and never made it? It got lost, let's say not here, it got lost over here. It was on its way to Truma Salishka, and instead of eventually arriving in Beis Amikdash, the messenger lost it on Thursday. Yeah, which means it was on its way to Truma Salishka, and then on Thursday, he was robbed, he was lost, stolen, and didn't make it to Beis Amikdash. It's still included. What happens if we find the money later, we'll see. Is still included. So on both accounts, whether it made it to Beis Amikdash or didn't make it to Beis Amikdash, yeah, if at this happy moment was on its way to Beis Amikdash, whether it made it or didn't make it, it's always good. It's always fine because what at the end of the day we say, as long as you're on your way on the right direction, then your korban is included and the money, what happens? If you lost the money, you don't even have to give new money later. Yeah, as far as I remember. What? Kilo Govo, you can you can uh, you can uh, define it like that. Not very nice. What happens? However, however, what happens if the messenger lost it before? Let's say he lost it on Tuesday. He lost it here. He got lost on Tuesday. Then no. Then there are not mechupa. The people of Monday, the owner, the owner who is over here, who gave it on Monday, who lives in a full of our way in Matula, if it got lost before Truma Salishka, mm -mm, then he's not included in the in the Korbonos, and he'll have to bring, I mean, he's included as long as he'll bring it later. He owes it to Beis Amikdash, yeah? He's, I'm not saying he's not included, he's part of Klal Yisrael, but Lamai said he will have to give it. That his own achray is to give it, and we can't say, ah, okay, you lost it, you lost it, as long as it was on its way into Beis Amikdash. That, I'm saying this according to the Rambam. Rashi says everything different, and Rashi is a little bit more complicated. Rashi said it depends if he knew about it, didn't know about it. I'm not going with Rashi, because I have mercy on you. The Maisa, that's what the Rambam says. The Rambam says all we care about is, was it already lost or not? Yeah, that's all. Okay. That's, that's what we have to know in order to start the ball rolling. Now, Zok the Gemara, beautiful. The Amino. Yeah? Yes, 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 it was. All communal korbonus. You want to bring your own korban because your wife gave birth, because uh, you broke Shabbos, because you came back from Chul? That's very nice. Nothing to do with that. As far as I know, communal korbonus and also uh, participation in Besam Mikdash maintenance. Yeah? The, uh, paying, the, paying the account of the Besam Mikdash. Shem Echinam Eino Nishba. So we said, if anything happens to Hekdesh, Hashem does not have to take Shavua when it comes to Hekdesh. Berminu, a question from the following Mishnah in Shkolim. Bnei people of a certain town in Eretz Yisrael, whichever town, they sent their Shkolim to Beis Amikdash, they got lost their soul, who, who, what is it stolen from or lost from? The shliach, the messenger, the courier. The courier is the one who lost it, got stolen from him. Now, wait a second. You tell me before we continue. Who is he? Let's say he does have to take shvua. Who is he accountable to? Who does he have to give answers to? 
Oh, Gisborne, the owner, depends when. Depends when. Depends when. Think, think, think. Who is he answerable to? Depends if it was before that crucial moment or after the crucial moment. If he followed what I said, he will fall into pieces very clearly. At some point, he's answerable to the Gizbar, Beis Amikdash, whichever you call him. And at another stage, he's answerable to the owner. Let's see what the Mishnah has to say. If the Truma was already given, and what? And they are included. The owner already has the tick. He ticked the box. The owner says, great. I frankly don't care that you lost it. You lost it, you shmust it. What do I care? I'm already miscaper. I don't have to give new money. All very nice. And therefore, who is angry? He's accountable and has to take shvua to answer the questions of the gizbar. Why? Because the gizbar says, I lost. Why did the gizbar lose? Because the gizbar gave money from other people relying on the fact that he will get the money eventually. It's true that if the money was lost, my, uh, mark my words, this is not a contradiction. If the money got lost and there was no hope, what can I do? But if I suspect you, Mr. Courier, that you're Poshia, yeah, of course I want the money, right? The Gizbar. The Gizbar is losing here. Beis Amikdash is losing. They prepaid for somebody who eventually didn't pay. I'll give you a marshal. Let's say uh, 10 friends want to all join uh, one uh, to give a gift to someone. Everyone wants to give a gift to Avramele for his, uh, I don't know, 71st birthday. Each one gives 20 shekels. And I say to you, you know what? I'll give 20 shekels on your behalf. And even if you lose it, it's okay. Ah, but the Evan, I pay 40. My friend is already included in the gift. His name is there on the nice note, yeah? And I said, okay, sure. Ah, but if I find the 20 shekels, who will take them? Of course, me. I'm the one who forked out the money to begin with. Of course, I'm the one that, okay, if you lost, I'm Michael. But if you didn't lose, I'm the one who want to know where it is. I'm the one who prepaid instead of you. That's exactly what's going on here with Beis Amikdash. So Beis Amikdash, if at that point he lost it, he has to give Shvua to the Gizbar, to Beis Amikdash. And obviously, the Imlav, if it was lost before it hit Beis, before the Truma was given, Nishba in the Bnei Ha'ir. Then, then they have to be Nishba to who? To Bnei Ha'ir. Because Bnei Ha'ir, the people, the owners, they say, excuse me, eh, I gave you the stuff, the money, to give Beis Amikdash. Now I'm not included. I'm not included if it was lost before. And therefore, now, not included does mean, oh, by the way, let me explain to you now, what's the hope of the person who lost it, yeah? That's why they're three times a year. So if somebody lost the money or is late, he has two more chances for the next Ruma Salishka. That's why they did it three times over. If he lost all three times, that is also included, and then the money goes to something else. But at this point, you lost it before it actually made it to the destination? Give me answers, Rabbi uh, Messenger. You're saying that it wasn't your fault? I want you to be Nishba in Beisdin with the separate turn. Tell me that it wasn't your fault. Yeah, Let's say the guy, the messenger, does take an oath and say, yes, it wasn't me, meaning it was Oines, it was Gneva Vaveda, if it's Chinam, whatever. Then in Chinami, we can't take that money from him. And then they lost. Who? The Bnei Ha'ir, the owners, they now will have to give new money to Beis Amikdash which will hopefully make it before the next truma. All very nice. Now, what happens if Nimtseu or Sheikh Zero Maganovim? A ah, happy ending, nice, like a nice, uh, you know, Disney story. At the end of the story, what happened? They were found. What was found? The money. Yeah, it was lost and then found. Or the Ganovim, yeah, the thieves all of a sudden got their, you know, bad feelings, you know, conscious, and they gave back the, the, the Shkolim. Who gets it now? Elu ve'elu Shkolim hem. The shekel remains Kodesh, says Rashi, once it's Kodesh, Kodesh, right? Kodesh remains the Kedusha. The ain't only in the Mishon Abo. In other words, if they got lost over here, they have to give new money. Who? The people, because it didn't make it to the important time of the of the of the Truma, right? If they found it, they'll have to give again. And if it was lost later, then Beis Amikdash gain, and it will not be taken off their account from next year. In other words, the people lose and basically make this gains. But that's not the main point. The main point here is, my friends, we all get the question. What did you just say? We just said that the person over here has to take Shavuot to the Gizbar. Oop, what? Shavuot to the Gizbar? 
the shkolim are holy, holy, holy. The gizbar is based on mikdash rep, and you're saying that shomachinam does take shvua in front of hekdash on hekdash stuff. That's exactly outward, uh, 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 downright against what the Mishnah said. The Mishnah said that the shomer does not take shvua when it comes to hekdash to base on mikdash. What's going on over here? No. We said by Holy Temple we don't take Shavua. And now we're saying Holy Temple you do take Shavua. So it's both Holy Temple. <laughs> Answers the Gemara, like Rav Messenger of Merlanu. Omar Shmuel, Askinan. We're talking here about the Shoymer Soho. So what? So if it's a Shoymer Soho, why is it any better? Now listen to this. Uh, huge revolution. We're talking about a guy who was hired for three things. Kesef, money, and Dinero, and what? And we deal with Noise Sochor. The Nishboin, you know what kind of Shvua he has to take? Little Schoron. This guy who lost the item, he says, you know, I'll swear to you, not that he swears to the Gizba or to the people that he didn't do it. He's a Shomer Sochor, and he says, I want my money. I want my wages. You promised me 30 shekels an hour. It's been 10 hours to base a mikdash. What, my 300 shekels? Yeah, I what? We say that, what kind of shuva does he have to take? That it's not by him. We say, maybe you're lying. Maybe the money, the pocket is inside your socks, between your sneakers and your socks down there. Maybe that's where the shekel is. And you're lying to us. He swears that he doesn't lie, that he doesn't have it. So now we should pay him his salary, his wages. I saw this and I hit myself on the head and I said, since Kita Dalid, or before, I've been learning about Shomrim. Never occurred to me the Shomer Sochor also has to get paid. And here he didn't even do the job. That's another question, right? But Lamai said that's the issue, which means Anachinami. He doesn't have to take Shvua to tell us what happened with it. We have to believe him. There's no Shvua. Elamai, he's now claiming from us, give me the salary, he says to the owner who hired him, who commissioned him, says the Gemara, and oh, what's the Shvua? I swear that it's not by me. To do my job, I did. Look, I ran. <laughs> I have aid him that I did the job, that I tried my best. Yeah, I'm panting all over. And what? And really, I am interested in my salary. I swear that it's not by me. Frek the Gemara Yochi, if so, Nishboin the Gizborin? What does he have to be Nishba to the Gizbar? Who hired him? Who hired him? The people, the owner, the Bnei Ayir, not the Gizborin. Nishboin the Gizborin? What does he have to do with Gizbar? The Gizbar don't have to pay money. We should have said that he always has to swear by Bnei Ayir. Before, middle, or after, the only ones who ever paid him salary or promised him any money are the Bnei Ayir, those who hired him, not the Gizborim. Why did they have to Nishba to the Gizborim to take the money? Answer the Gemara, no. Omar Rabbi, you know what he means. Nishboim li Bnei Ayir, he has to take Shvua to Bnei Ayir to, to answer back to Bnei Ayir with the Shvua. Bemaimad Gizborim. In the presence of the Gizborim, soon we'll explain why, so they don't suspect him. Let me explain. Which means, if he lost it over here, yeah, then who are the ones who lose? The Bailim. The Bailim may be angry with him, why did you lose it? And what? And we say, listen, I'm also angry with you, or not angry, I claim I need my money because uh, I did my job. Well, he didn't do his job, that's a question for later. Uh, I worked for you, so give me the money. Take Shavua that it's not by you. Maybe it's inside your socks over there. Yeah, He's yeah. taking Shavua, it's not his, and they pay his salary. At this point, the Gizborim don't care. He didn't make it to Besamek, which doesn't affect the Gizborim whatsoever. However, if the exact same story happened, Le'achar the Truma, if the give and take between the people, meaning between the Shliach and the Meshalchim, the Bnei Ha'ir, if they are having this give and take, and he has to swear that it's not in his inside his socks or inside his mouth, yeah? Then what? Then there's a third party interested. It's them. Those who forked out the money, who paid in advance, so to speak, for the shkolim, they also want to know if it's not inside your socks, right? Because they say, excuse me, if this is somewhere hitting in your pocket, Mr. Messenger, possible liar, shliach, then what? We also want to know. We also want to know because we are the ones who had to pay double, right? We had, we had to pay for your loss now. I gave the extra 20 shekel gift for my friend, and you didn't, and your name is written on the gift, right? Ah, if so, that's the question is, 
And says the Gemara, no, because of that, it has to be in their presence. The Shvua itself is vis-a-vis the Bailim. But the Gizborim are there, so the Gizborim don't suspect him either. Because Gizborim also want to know that their money indirectly wasn't stolen. They want to be there and listen to his Shvua. Binami. Zoom stopped, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Binami. Or alternatively, so they should not be called Poishim. They don't want to be called Poishim by the Gizborim. They don't want Besamik. Okay. Inami also kihechi so that the lulikulu poishim, the the shliach or shlichim don't want besamikdash people besamikdash staff to call them poishim. Break the gemara again. So what's the discussion here? Let, let's now recap. Really, this person doesn't have to take shvua to the gizborim. The shliach has to take shvua. It's his own working contract with the mishalchim. Nothing to do with kedusha or anything. Of course, he has to take shvua. Yeah. Wait a second. We just said that what happened to the money? It got lost or stolen, right? Now, the Shomer Soho, Shomer Soho, last time I checked, the Gneva Vabeda, Chiuvi Mikhaev, right? The Shomer Soho has to pay for Gneva Vabeda. Everybody knows that, every child knows that. Now, the Ochonami here too, let's develop the question. Over here also, yeah, Nehi, although the Shlumi Lomishalmi, Although they don't have to pay because it's money of Hekdesh, again, don't forget the money right from the start is Kodesh. You know that. The Shkolim are Kodesh right from the start. They were Makdish to base Amikdash. So even though the Shomer Socher doesn't have to pay because it's Kodesh and, and he's not liable for Kochim, Agrayum, he alifsid. But, you, but he should at least lose his schar. He should lose his salary. In other words, I would call one word. It's one English word more common in New York. It's called Huspa. You know it's Huspa? How do you go and say chutzpah? 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 Excuse me? What? Chutzpah? Do English goyim know that word? Just Cheek. American goyim know Cheek. it. Cheek. Chutzpah. Yeah. In other words, you're, you're crazy? You didn't, do, you didn't do your job. You were hired to look after the item for Gneva Vaveda. You admitted Gneva Vaveda and you want your money? You didn't do the job. You didn't do your job. What kind of money are you asking for? You get a, a cleaner to clean your house. She makes it even messier and dirtier. She wants her money. What are you talking about? Omar Rabbe says, Rabbe, there's a solution for that. It's the same solution that appears many times. Nignevu, you know what kind of theft it was? The least in Mizuyan, it was an armed robber. Armed robber, which means what? It is Oines. Ah, Oines, the Shomer Socher, is not, is, wasn't hired. He wasn't Netanyahu's bodyguard. He wasn't hired to be, you know, to face bullets. Ovdu, What's Ovdu? He didn't get lost because, you know, he's looking at his smartphone in the train. Ovdu, the Sfina was lost at sea. In other words, Aveda was such an Aveda beyond his control, which is very good. So that's the answer. We're talking here about Oinsin. When it comes to Oinsin, that's beyond the scope of Hashem HaSachar. Hashem HaSachar says, yes, I did my job. My job was not to get it to Beis Amikdash. My job was to look after it while I'm on my way to Beis Amikdash. And I did. I he was uh, came an armed uh, robber. That's not be, that that I wasn't hired for that. I wasn't hired for that. So I said my little job. I did pay me the money. So really the shvua here. So that's one good answer. Which means what we're not talking here about the shomer being nishba too to prove himself innocent towards kochim because that doesn't work. It doesn't have to be. He's only the other way. He's nishba to receive his salary, and that's true. That's nothing to do with Kochim or not Kochim. The guy did a job. The guy sort of did his job. It wasn't his fault. That does make a difference. It does make a difference, and I'll tell you why. Because Lemaisa, whether before or after, he claims he did the job, and he did. Because once he was Nenas, he looked after it for five hours, yes. While he was on the train to Yerushalayim, he did. The fact he was stolen, a guy came to him in the train, an Arab with a gun, not his fault, right? 
Elama, that's it. That's where the story, and that does make a difference. Before. The only difference before and after, Rabbi, is are the Gizborim present at the time of Shavua or not? If it's before, the Gizborim don't even have to be there when it's Nishma. It's none of their stupid business, yeah? But if it was after the Truma, then it is their business because they already forked out money by the Truma. And then it said, we also want to be there and listen to the Shavua because we also want to know that our money, indirectly ours, was really, really stolen. We want to hear that from his own mouth. Very nice. You know, look how nice and easy. Baruch Hashem. Rabbi Yochanan Oma, this is a lot of preparation, you know. Rabbi Yochanan Oma. Rabbi Yochanan has an alternative answer. Oh, Mani, you know who's the author of this uh, Mishnah? Rabbi Shimoni, it's Rabbi Shimon, he, which we also saw in our Mishnah. What does Rabbi Shimon say? Rabbi Shimon says, the Omer Kodshim Shechayev Be'achrayuson Yeshlein Oino V'nishboi Nolem, which means, I told you many times, and we saw it in the Mishnah, what Kodshim Shechayev Be'achrayuson? Kodshim Shechayev Be'achrayuson means, if I have a behema and I said, Harei Olai, it is upon me, it's incumbent upon me that I will bring a Korban to Beis HaMikdash, and I have Dolly the sheep, yeah, that is running around my, my backyard. If she's going to die or lost or stolen, who will have to bring a new sheep to Beis HaMikdash? Me. So Dolly indirectly belongs to me. Even though it's Hekdesh, but because if it gets lost, I'm answerable. I'll have to fork out new money to come up with new money. Then what? It's considered indirectly mine. And if somebody steals it from me, or if somebody guards it for me, let's say I let someone guard after Dolly the Oilo, Dolly the Corbin Oilo for me, then he'll have to be Nishba. Although Kochim, you don't have to be Nishba. It's not purely Kochim. It's a mixture of Kochim and me, because I will have to pay if it gets lost. So if you, excuse me, Mr. Nitwit, if you didn't look after it nicely, I'll be answerable. So I, yes, will ask you to take Shavua. And that's exactly what's going on over here. Look. Because over here we say that if you, it's true that the Kodshim, that the coin itself is Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. Very nice. However, if it gets lost before it hit the mark, who will have to pay again, Mr. Shoimer? Us, right? Therefore, it's considered ours enough that you should make Shavua. Exactly like Rab Shimon, it's Rab Shimon. Now, the obvious question is what? That's all very nice when? Before the, before the Truma, like you said, that's okay, that's good. Before the truma was given, you're right. If it gets lost, it's a Christ of the owner. So give the owner. You should answer to the owner. But once the truma was given, that's just the other way around. Right? True? Because Lamaisa, once the truma was given, then who is caught free? Who's off the hook? The owner. Right? The owner. If it gets lost over here, the owner says, says to Vesemik, they so sorry, bro, nothing. They don't have to give more money, right? LMI, so therefore it's Kochim She'en Chai Ba'cha So why does they have to take Shavua? Why does they have to take Shavua? Right? No, it's absolutely already not disconnected. At this point, it got disconnected completely from the Bailim. Once he was on the train on the way to Yerushalayim, they should be in close touch on the phone. Once you're on the train on Wednesday when they take the truma and, 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 and it's still in your hands, we're good. Take the box. Hey, darling, let's go have nice supper. Our Corbin is there, even if he didn't make it. Mimei, let's go. So why is it nishba to anybody? Why is it nishba? The Tanya. The Tanya. What? Yeah. Oh, but to make the not nishba. Right. And to base a mixed you're not supposed to be Nishba, only to the owner. That's good for the problem. The Tanya, it says in the Brisa, or Tanan, some say to Mishnah, Toil mean the Truma works for Allah Ovud. Let's say something got lost, the Truma works for him. And the Korbanos of the next three months will be his, will be his, he'll be included in them. Balagovui. Let's say something was collected, but didn't yet make it to the actual box. As I told you, there are three small boxes out of an entire big room. What about all the other coins? The next three months, Corbonus don't belong to them. Of course, they belong to them. Also, something that will be collected, what they collected, is included. So, mainly the question is, but kids, that's proof that's what? That the people who lost or whatever happened to them, they're still included. So, who are you answerable to? To the Gizborim. Thank you. Answerable to Gizborim, there is no Shvua. There's no Shvua by Hekdash to Gizborim, right? Therefore, answer to Gemara, whole new answer. El Omar Blozo, and that's the final answer, brought down by all the Rishonim. 
שבוע זו תקונס חכמים היא, it's a special תקונס חכמים for a shliach who carries with him the money, special שבוע for him, against the regular halacha. What's the idea of this special unique שבוע? שלא יהיו בני עוד מזלזלים בהקדי שויס. People shouldn't come to belittle and mistreat הקדי שויס. That's the idea, which means, again, so generally speaking, a person looking after items of הקדש does not have to be נשבה. Rabbonon instigated in certain cases that he should be nishba, he should have to take shvua, such as the shliach who carries the money, so people don't start being mezalzel, right? Midah or Isa, nobody has to take shvua. Midah Rabbonon, a lot of shomer would say, ah, hekdesh, okay, <laughs> let's have my coffee and, you know, get updated with the latest website, because hekdesh can't do anything to me, right? Almost, right? Hekdesh will not make me take shvua, so therefore Chachomi made the shvua, don't be mezalzel, they made it to Kono, that people should be nishba, even though it's Ekdesh, even though Midor Raisa, you don't have to, Midor Abonon, in many cases you have to, because, so people shouldn't, shouldn't come to be too lackadaisical about it. Yes, Viter, questions or comments? Arab Yosef. Oh, you see that there's a case of the return. We see that the Ganovim, in one case of the Mishnah, if the return, then he goes to Beis HaMikdash, and Beis HaMikdash gained double, right? Because maybe they had bad feelings. Let's be down the cops who they didn't know it's Ekdesh. They didn't know it's calling, maybe. That's why they stole it. So it's okay. Weiter. <laughs> okay, I don't... What? What? To the Gizborn. To the Gizborn. After, after... Well, it depends. After, after the Truma to the Gizborn. After Truma to the Gizborn. I hope I'm not doing that. Okay. <laughs> Depends what they were, Chinam HaSochah. Depends what they were. We were only Mami Chama Sochor. The first answer said that it's the whole Shavuah is for him to receive a salary. Chinam doesn't apply. But a current answer would apply to both Chinam and Sochor. Because nobody should be Mizalza, not even Shama Chinam. I think. I think so, at least. Why should it be different? Misvo, I don't see a difference. If the idea is to, yes, make them uh, be Nishba, so they're not Mizalza, be it Chinam Sochor, my grandma. No difference. The mice they have to be nishma. I think so. I mean, I didn't see otherwise. Doesn't make sense otherwise. Does this mean we're in the two dots now? Noisa socher eno mishalem. Soon we're going to get to the point that we spoke about before. A noisa socher. What's his name? Shomer socher eno mishalem. If a shomer socher actually failed, and what happened? Begneve va'aveda. He got lost from him. To Hekdesh, he doesn't have to pay if it's Hekdesh. And the same goes to what? For Kois and Shtort Vavodim. Now we're talking about Hekdesh. Rami Rav Yosef Varchama Lerabba. Rav Yosef Varchama asked Rabba a Rami, a question from one Mishnah to the other. Tnan, it says in our Mishnah, if a person is a paid Shomer, paid guard, to look after stuff of Beis HaMikdash, of Hekdesh, he doesn't have to pay if, if Gneva Vaveda happened. She has a question. Now, Beramini, look at the following Mishnah. Now, this Seicher was a Gizbar. Let's say a person in charge of Beis HaMikdash finances and, and maintenance and technical things, he hired a worker, Lishmo. In other words, he hired a guard. Look what this guard has to do. Esaporo. The Pora Aduma. A Pora Aduma. A Pora Aduma belongs to Hekdesh. And you have to make sure, and that's a very hard job, to make sure that he doesn't do any work, that nothing sits in the Pora Aduma, maybe a bird. Yeah, but let me see it. Yeah, no, but anything serious, like a package, even a small thing, doesn't go on its back. That he doesn't get married with some nice ox in the area, you know, and doesn't have some, you know, uh, romantic connections with him. The par has to be very well guarded that what? Nothing is touched, nothing this, all red. Lishmar Satinok, to look after the baby. Here's a halachic babysitter. What kind of babies the base of Mikdash had to look after? There was a whole process of when they would draw the water from the Gihon, from the river near Beis HaMikdash, those water, this water had to be, that water had to be very, very, very well guarded and very tohor to make sure that it's very, very pure. So, so strict it was that they would raise babies, they would actually have some children born, what? It's a Gemara, the beginning of second Berak of Sukkah. Sukkah, the beginning of second Berak of Sukkah. There was a, there was a whole neighborhood in Yerushalayim that was built with extra tahara over making sure there are no dead people underneath with enough space, 
and the kids would be raised there, born and raised there. Why children? Because children don't see a zera. They don't have any, you know what I mean, yet. Yeah? And therefore, by the age of eight, before they can possibly be tome, and they were guarded like crazy, no mace, no sherets, no nothing, hygienically kept like that. And only then they would be driven, when they reach the age of eight or nine, on a cow, on a big cow, because a big cow with a big door on top of it would make sure that no Tumas mace penetrates. Then they would go to the river. They would take cups of cheres, of special type of, not cheres, of even. Evan doesn't receive Tuma. Everything would be done with super extra, extra, extra Tahara, creme de la creme, five stars Tahara. Those babies need Shmira. That they don't, not that uh, an Arab wouldn't come and attack them. They need Shmira that, what? That they don't get any Tuma. They don't play with a nice uh, dead mouse. You know, Minnie or Mickey died and they want to be their friends. No, you can't touch that baby. So they have to be guarded the Tinook. And this person is paid money. He's paid to look after the cow, or after the babies. Lishmos has roim to look after the seeds. Which seeds of what of the field? The field next to Beis Hamikdash was the field for the Omer because we want the first, the first barley to be harvested from where? From that field. Maybe somebody will harvest before a reform rabbi. Aha! Uh -huh. We want to make sure that the first harvesting is done motzi yom tovrish and pesach, and the first one goes to Hashem. You have to look after that. Okay, very nice. So bekitzer. Base a mikdash, my friends, for their own purposes. They hired a shomer sachar, a shomer sachar. Yeah. So now, ain't nice no schar Shabbos. Let's say they they hired him for one day. Let's say that day was the holy Sabbath. On Shabbos, he doesn't get paid. Why not? Because on Shabbos, you're not allowed to take schar Shabbos, even though it's not chilul Shabbos, right? It's not chilul Shabbos too. Guard, at, guard to look after the baby or guard the field. Mashain can mitzad the schar Shabbos. As far as I know, it's the rabbanon. He may come to write and stuff. Don't take schar. Don't take a salary wages for your work of Shabbos. Lefikach because he doesn't get paid for Shabbos. And achray Shabbos olav. So if anything happened on Shabbos, it's not his achrayis. I'm a shomer sochor. If something of the level of gneva vaveda, don't ask me about pshia. But let's say there was a gneva vaveda. Somebody did steal. Uh, the, the 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 wheat the, the barley let's say in cut it in a way there was level of gneva vaveda I'm sorry if I'm not being paid I'm not a shomer sachar as such I don't have any achrayis don't look at me however and this is what Shlomo said here is the source here is I think is the only source in Shas to the famous idea called havlo as we're about to see now soon we'll see what is havlo let's continue let's see what's here you know what Shabbos means over here. A week. Let's say he was hired not day day by day, not on a daily basis, every day new agreement. He was hired for an entire week in one go. Yeah, lump sum for a whole week. So for the week you get whatever three hundred shekels, five hundred shekels. Then schir chodesh, he was hired per month. Schir shono, he was hired with an annual salary. Schir shavua, that's seven years. Wow, he has a contract for one big salary for seven years. Nois nin lois chal shabes. Then the Schar Shabbos he gets of the Shabbos of the Saturday of Shabbos. And that is what Shlom is telling us is called of law. The only reason why waiters and babysitters and balikoira and caterers can work on Shabbos, and I'm serious now, Ellen, yeah, that is what, how can they get money for that? Ever occur to you? How did these young boys with little kippot work in the cater on Shabbos on your daughter's Sheva Brochus on your grandson's Bar Mitzvah? Are they working on Shabbos? Excuse me. Aren't they religious? The answer is they get paid for what they do before and after. If it includes, if the Shabbos is part of a bigger payment plan, then it's okay. That's what the Gemara, on that Rabbani we're not goes there. And that's the story of this God over here, the Fikach, because if Shabbos is part of a weekly salary or a three day salary, he does Friday, Shabbos, and Sunday something to take off the table, not to Shabbos, set the table on Friday. Shabbos is part of a big thing. Then, and Chinami, he gets paid for Shabbos and it's kosher, but it only also comes with responsibility. Lefikach, therefore, Achrai is Shabbos Olov. The Achrai of Shabbos is also on him. Oh, meaning what? What do you mean now is responsible for Shabbos? That, my love, what does it mean? L'shalem. Hey, wait a second. If really he is included in a week, what's called Behavlo, it's swallowed inside a bigger salary, He's supposed to work on Shabbos for money, and that's halachically okay. 
and therefore he has responsibility. What does it mean that Shomer Sachar has responsibility? To, to pay. To pay if something happens. If we see that on Shabbos the item was lost or stolen, Mr. Shomer Sachar, you have to pay. You have to pay. Ooh. So we see that even though we're talking about Hekdish, now you can't say the answer before people, Shmipo. There are no people involved, only Hekdish. And you see that he does have to pay Hekdish and swear back or, 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 or answer and pay Hekdish. So how do you explain that? Answers the Gemara, no, 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 no. He will not pay us, but ahem, 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 we won't pay him. That's what he means. When we say he's responsible, we say, listen, mister, if you lost it, it's true that we, Hekdesh, don't have to pay you. Yeah, I'm sorry. You don't have to pay us, but we don't have to pay you either. You didn't do your job. If you're Shomer Sochor hired for Gneva Vaveda, and Gneva Vaveda was actually, is what happened, yeah, we don't have to pay you. Yeah. We we're supposed to pay. We're not paying you. Let's leave it. Let's even it out. You're not paying us? Okay, because we're Hekdesh. We lost. But you also lose because you didn't do your job. That would happen even if you worked for a regular guy. You just didn't do your job. And that's what the Christ means. But Enechnami doesn't have to pay. Yehochi comes the question, and that question is going to kill it. Yehochi, if so, look at the ratio. What did we just say a minute ago? What's the first case? Diktani, you remember the first case? The guy works for, per day. The guy works Sunday separately, Shabbos separately. It's not one salary for everything. Then we said, and Achrai Shabbos Olov. Because he doesn't get paid for Shabbos, if I hire the person per day separately, Friday separately, Shabbos separately, Sunday separately, on Shabbos I won't pay him. I can't say you only come on Shabbos to work, to work as a Shomer, and I'll pay you just for Shabbos uh, 300 shekels. You can't do that. And therefore, there is no responsibility. Wait a second. How did you interpret Ein Achrayas? Achinami de lahafsid If you say that Achrayas or no Achrayas, have to touch by him losing his sachar, and you want to tell me, no, Achrayas means that he's not losing his sachar. How can he say that? Does he get a salary? He never gets a salary. Again, doesn't make sense. If you want to tell me that Achrayas, no Achrayas means him getting a salary or not getting a salary, doesn't make sense. Because in Shabbos, the first case, he never gets his salary, not because of the base of Mikdash or conditions or stories, because of Shmir Shabbos. That applies, my friends, nothing to do with Hekdash. That applies 2023 between two Yidin. Yeah, if I hire Alan to entertain my family on Shabbos with the old nice Diver Torah and English humor, come to me and I'll pay you to entertain us, everybody. No. Yes, it's Shabbos. I can't pay you. Hey, hey, no. If the agreement was per Shabbos only, and you're not preparing the jokes on Friday, doing something about Shabbos, then what? Then in a chinami, I'm not going to pay you. So how can you say the issue is a salary? There is no salary. Elamai must be what? Must be. Then when we said, achrayas no achrayas, means him to pay us. Must be, it's a shomer paying us, not us paying the shomer. So again, back to square one. How can you tell me that in case where he does get paid for the whole week, and Shabbos is included, and then he is a legal halachic, shomer Shabbos, shomer sochor. That's a good one. He's a shomer Shabbos, shomer sochor. And then we say, he has responsibility. Must be, we mean, him paying us. Uh, that doesn't work. Because how can he say that? A sh- uh, you can't pay Hekdesh if you flunked it, because we said Shomer Sochor doesn't pay Hekdesh. And here we see, does pay, question mark. Answer the Gemara, no answer. Ishtik, hoo At that happy note, Rabba kept quiet. Stroked his beard, maybe, or maybe he didn't. He kept quiet, didn't answer of Yosef. Omer Le, then Rabba asked him, did you hear anything about it? Did you hear any idea about this idea? Yes, I did. This is what Rav Shesha said. And that is, Which means, normally, a Shomer Sochor doesn't have to pay based on me. Right? In other words, if I told a guy, Hello, my name is Mr. Gizbarovich from Mesa Mikdash. Do you mind being a Shomer Sochor and he'll pay you a salary? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. If all goes well, a Shomer Sochor can work for Mesa Mikdash. Guarded it. At the end of the day, gets his salary. I don't know, 300 shekels. All nice. Anki Dori, beautiful. What happens if a Shomer Sochor flunked and doesn't admit he did anything, whatever? Or even if he did, actually. 
He doesn't have to pay for Gneva Vaveda. Got lost or stolen, he's a Shomer Sochor without the Chiyuvim of Shomer Sochor. Yeah, he's going to say, oh, I'm so sorry, and go home. Very nice. However, hi, we saw here that he does pay. That is B'Shekonomi Odoi. If the Gizbar is smart enough, the Gizbar has a way, halachic way, to be Mikhaev and obligate and commit the Shomer to be a full Shomer Sochor. Let's say they made a Kenyan. What's a Kenyan? We all know by now, because you guys are experts in Kenyanim. We've seen the Kenyanim all over the place. Let me ask you a question. If I want you to entertain my family, not on Friday, my wife's upcoming birthday, oh, British, here, I'll bring you somebody to, to tell you British jokes, okay? And then I hire the person for how much? For 100 pounds to come say jokes, okay? Now, if I just say, will you come, Meikardin, Meikardin, forget about Mishapora. Can you come to my house in Kav Cheshvaz to say English jokes? Absolutely so. So then what? It was only words, only talk. Is he mechuyev to come? In other words, he has to pay me? I have to pay him? No. What happens with the Kenyan? With the Kenyan. I come to your house, and you do Kenyan sleeping, and we're not calling anything physical. We're calling uh, the work. We're calling uh, the job. He's mechuyev to come. Yes. And if he doesn't come, he'll have to pay me. And if I cancel, I'll have to pay him. Kenyan is not only for objects. It's a discussion about it, but the gadol, generally, Kenyan is not an object. You can acquire services in today's world also, right? If a person signs a contract, I will come and sing, I will come and dance, and he breaks the contract. Of course he has to be, right? I don't like to compare to Goy Shalom, but yeah, that's Kenyan. Ah, that's a story over here. If the person, that Sharma Sochor, Konumi Odoi, they actually made a Kenyan that commits him to pay, that obligates him to pay, then he has to pay because he committed himself specifically, and that's not against the Torah. The Torah said a regular Shomer Sochor. In other words, in other words, let, let me let me uh, crystallize the difference. If check uh, this, this. Yes, yes. If it's no, 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 no. If it's Shabbos only, then you can't pay against the locho. No, he's asking from no Shabbos reflected on the Avlo. You didn't get it. No, Shabbos you anyhow don't get paid, and therefore you never are responsible because you're, you're not getting money for Shabbos. But Shankin, if it was the Avlo plus Kenyan, Avlo, there are two issues here. No, you need to, again. You no, 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 again, 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 again. There are two parallel issues here all the time. Shabbos, you keep Shabbos. That's right. And Hekdesh. There are two issues here. Shomer Shabbos and Shomer Socho. There are two issues here. Let's get it nice and slow. Okay, you know, we even have a little bit of time today. If the person, forget about Beis Mikdash for a minute. Whether the person works for Beis Mikdash, he works for uh, Chaim Yanko, he works for uh, Shlomo Atias, he works for the, uh, whichever Jewish body, any Jewish person working for any Jewish person, forget about anything. If you get your salary per day, every day you get your salary separately, it's a canoe contract every day, okay? You're not supposed to be getting for Shabbos. You're not allowed to be paid for Shabbos. Allah Aruch. Jewish people don't work on Shabbos, right? Of course, that's what merits also know. Now, what happens if it's a Shomer Sochor on Shabbos? Because he's not really Shomer Sochor. <laughs> he doesn't get his salary for Shabbos. He did, he did it. He doesn't get paid. Then what? He doesn't have to pay for Gneva Vaveda. I'm not a Shomer Sochor. No pain, no gain. Of course. Adkan Akofa Aleph. Forget about Beis Mikdash. Second story. Of course, it also applies in Beis Mikdash, obviously. <laughs> now, what happens? Story number two. Havlo. Havlo. Havlo means what? Do the whole job. Prepare the. You know, how do you pay babysitters to come on Shabbos? You're not allowed to. You want babysitters for your grandchildren? Don't ask her to come only on Shabbos and look after them and get paid money for an hour. It's also, she has to prepare stories and toys before Shabbos. So she works for you on Friday. And she works to you on Shabbos, only then it's allowed. I mean, in her house, yeah? But she does not. That's what they do. Okay, very nice. Now, if it's Bavlo, the Shabbos issue is taken care of. He gets his money. Now starts Hekdish. Now let's Hekdish kick in. If it's a regular person between Akiva and, uh, and Yaakov, Akiva and Yosef, then what? Then once there's a law, and you're supposed to guard, and you get money to be a Shomer Sochor over a school, let's say, or this the, by secular things, then what? Then in Shomer Sochor, if Greva Vaveda happened, you pay. At Kantov. The only Chiddush is Hekdesh. The question was, how can Hekdesh ask the person to pay them to compensate for the loss? Because even though it's Bavlo, 
a Shomer Socher is not supposed to pay Hekdesh to, to compensate Hekdesh for his problems, right? For, for, for mistreating the thing. That's a question. On that came the answer. Now everything is good. In the case of Avlon, based on Mikdash, he gets his salary. I, based on Mikdash, not supposed to charge a Shomer Socher. That's true. If he says, I'm a Shomer Socher. But if he says, I'm a Shomer Socher and did a physical Kenyan, they went to his house and they picked up the handkerchief, Caleb Shulkoine, and they said what? And they said, this symbolic act showed that you are personally mischayev to take care of this and pay if anything happens. That's a portion contract. And in that case, even for the base to base a mikdash, yes. Lighter. Yeah, question. Yes. Okay. Rab Shimon Oimer. Rab Shimon Oimer. Kodshim shechay ba'achrayuson yesh le'noyno. If I have kodshim in my house that I'm responsible for, which means I said hare olai. If this if this animal dies, I'll have to pay for it, right? And I sell it to someone, and he cheated me, or I cheated him. You call it cheating. I like cheating him. Oh no, I over or underpriced. Then I know applies. Why does it know apply? Because it's not really fully belonging to Hashem. Because if he dies or something, I will be the one that I have to pay the new one. So indirectly, it's from my pocket, right? If the kochim you not when is that? If I said hareiz do not zu the Yerushalayim zu in Malcha. If I said this animal is oila, this only this zu berak zu. If this animal dies. I don't have to bring a new korban. No, I said this and not the other. Then if that animal is being sold because I'm not responsible for it and it's exclusively 100% only belonging to who? To Beis HaMikdash. Even though it's in Mahas in Ranana, but the Maisa, I was Makdish to Beis HaMikdash. And if anything happens off my shoulders, it's 100% belonging to Beis HaMikdash, even though it's my backyard in Ranana. And therefore what? And therefore that's regular Hekdash. And if there's over or under pricing, doesn't apply to it. You can over and under price as much as you want. Tani Tana Kamed Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Abba. And Amoira taught a Brysa in front of Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Abba. And that Brysa sounds very strange, and tomorrow we'll explain it. Just listen to the Brysa, and then we'll go home. Kochim Shechai Bar Chayev. Okay. Kochim Yuchayev in the the owner, then you have to pay Shani Koira Bahen Bahashem Vekichesh. Yep. Because they're called Hashem's Kochim. Did you hear that? The Kochim that I have to pay for, the, the, I, 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 then those Kochim, yeah, Chayev, yeah, in other words, if somebody else actually, if, if somebody else um, uh, swore to it, swore about it to me, is he has to pay me because it says it belongs to Hashem. It's a contradiction. Is it because it belongs to me or because it belongs to Hashem? That will be discussed in the morrow, Merz Hashem. Have a happy Tu Bishvat. May we have a flourishing, uh, blossoming, uh, spiritual. Atzlacha broche b'chol enyoni pronos, a gezunt nachas. All the fruit of the Torah will be able to harvest all year long, all our lives. Atzlacha rabbah.